With the rapidly expanding e-commerce market, Alexander Rink has identified his opportunity to take 360PI to the next level. Understanding the importance of innovation in this industry, Rink and his team must determine their next strategic moves in order to ensure the long-term success of 360PI. Good afternoon, my name is Luke. To my right is Caitlin, to my left are Shanice and Jeremy, and together we make up Paramount Solutions. Taking a look at your company's current situation, we identified a problem statement as well as three key issues and three key considerations. First off, how should 360PI approach international expansion through uh, to ensure successful growth? And then the three key issues, intensifying competition within the industry, the international expansion, as well as changing market trends. And then the considerations to keep in mind as we move forward, understanding consumer needs, the innovation and adaptability, as well as the cultural barriers associated with transitioning internationally. Situational analysis here today, taking a look at four major components that we felt were most important in your particular situation. Taking a look at the company, the industry, your consumer, and finally some environmental trends. First, we'll take a look at the company. 360PI has been established as a leading edge service as a software business. We primarily believe this is due to the uh, competencies as well as capabilities at the helm of this business and will continue to develop. We'd also like to highlight two strategic beliefs that your company has of not only being innovative but also being proactive. This leads into your ultimate goal of your aim of becoming uh, the leading provider of price intelligence. Uh, we firmly believe that to achieve this goal, having these two strategic beliefs is absolutely imperative. This leads us to our key takeaway here is that an effective solution should build on 360PI's desirable service by encompassing its strategic beliefs in pursuing growth. Taking a look at the industry analysis, you are in the price of intelligence industry, and it is very large and very fast growing. This can uh, attribute to the constant price changes and businesses wanting to know the competitive prices of their competitors in real time. It should also be noted that there are various offerings for different price intelligence, which is the product mix, the competitive prices, inventory levels, again, in real time. This leads us to our key takeaway today, that an effective solution should consider the industry's development and progression of differentiation between competitors. Taking a look at our consumer analysis, you are operating within the North American market, and in the past, you've operated within and primarily serviced the end consumer markets. And then recently, you made a shift to consider to the large omnichannel retailers. And this primarily is focused on your ability to be adaptive and flexible in your operations to change with market trends. And this brings us to our key takeaway that an effective solution should consider, uh, should acknowledge your company's extreme adaptability when considering how to expand internationally. So finally, we're going to take a look at an environmental analysis. Now we focused on four key areas here, looking at the legal trends, economic, social, and finally technology. So first, looking at the legal trends, it should be noted that your, as your company uh, largely uses internet as a form to communicate with your consumers as well as a way to gather data and access uh, this information, that uh, when you're, while you're expanding internationally, it should be noted that certain countries do have restrictions on internet use, and this is something that will have to be considered when choosing the location to expand to. Next, looking at the economic factors, uh, there will absolutely be more demand in an economic, economically stable region. There, if there's higher GDP, more growth this way, this will benefit your company. Next, uh, next moving on to the social trends, uh, consumers have begun price matching all on their own. The information is out there, the technology is out there, and this has led to showrooming, which is, of course, when a, a consumer goes to a brick and mortar, mortar uh, location to evaluate a, a, a product and then uses technological uh, benefits to uh, find a cheaper price and therefore order it from that location, right, as they're standing in a brick and mortar store that may potentially be more expensive. So this is something that you, this is an opportunity for your company to be able to capitalize on with these consumers. And finally, looking at the technology. First, of course, with the continued rise of e-commerce, this has benefited your company greatly in being able to find information and to produce your product. And then, of course, at the price intelligence software that you directly uh, program. And of course, different algorithms are required uh, for uh, different retailers and different industries, and this is something to look at when moving forward. So this leads us to our key takeaway that an effective solution should consider consumer demands and capitalize on those market opportunities. From our key takeaways, we came up with the following three decision criteria. This would be ease of implementation, industry trends, and the growth potential. When looking at ease of implementation, it looks at whether or not the alternative is easy to uh, 
to do. Looking at the industry trends is whether or not there's a trend in that industry that will make the alternative successful. And finally, looking at the growth potential, whether or not the alternative can foresee success in the future and uh, long term as well. This leads us to the five alternatives that we have identified today. Looking at additional brick and mortar, uh, this would involve going to additional brick and mortar and adding them to your current clientele. Looking at developing retail category, this specifically looks at entering the grocery market. Looking at the uh, targeting manufacturers, this would look at uh, taking your business to business model to manufacturers as well. Looking at uh, to re reconnect with the consumer market, this would uh, entail as well as doing business to business, doing business to consumer. And finally, looking at international expansion, this would be to enter a new country and see how your business to business uh, products work there. So this leads us to our decision matrix today. The five alternatives on the left. Each alternative will weigh against the criteria on a numerical value, one being low, two being moderate, and three being high. As you can see, the categories, reconnecting with consumer markets and international expansion, scores the highest. So these are the recommenda recommendations we are going to be taking today. And in regards to the additional bricks and mortars, although this could be easy to implement, it does not follow any of the industry trends, and there isn't much growth potential there. So that is why that alternative was disregarded. And looking at targeting manufacturers, currently you do have the retail price of products. When looking at the manufacturers, you will need to know the wholesale price. So this is why we didn't think it would be easy to implement and why that alternative was disregarded. So now we are extremely excited to bring to you today our adaptive growth strategy. Now this includes three phases to develop, create, and expand. And each of addresses and solves each one of the issues we identified at the beginning of the presentation. So the first phase directly solves the changing market trends. The second phase directly addresses the intensifying industry competition. And finally, the third phase directly addresses the international expansion issues. So let's look at our first phase here, which is develop. So we'd like to see you develop your service in the grocery trade site sector. Uh, it's been identified that this particular segment is underdeveloped and potential weakness. However, we would like to highlight this as a huge opportunity for your company. This particular segment accounts for a quarter of retail sales in North America. This is not something to be taken lightly, as grocery trade is a commodity that is not going anywhere, and we firmly believe that it's only a matter of time before e-commerce encompasses the grocery trade sector as well. Third point here is to note that Amazon is expanding on its food offerings. Amazon is one of the largest companies in the world, and when they make a strategic move, this is something that should be considered uh, with great regard. Uh, having those offerings available to the biggest companies uh, right now in the United States, we firmly believe that this is going to continue to grow as players will follow suit with Amazon as they are a trendsetter in this particular segment. And we firmly believe that them developing in the food sector will lead to ultimately other companies and finally the entire industry developing their uh, e-commerce sector in the grocery trade as well. Uh, our final point here is we believe that there's potential to leverage uh, this information with other services. We believe that developing in the grocery trade sector uh, can provide an opportunity as well as potential to develop uh, different means of information gathering in order to leverage this means of information and finally leverage that and offer it to the current consumers that you have in your business to business markets. So this leads us to our key goal here is to capitalize on a sector with tremendous potential uh, in pursuit of becoming the leading provider of price intelligence. Now taking a look at our second phase, this is the create phase. And in the past, you have innovated to find yourselves taking part in the business to business market. And you need to innovate again to keep up with the demands of the industry. So this is why we'd like to see you create a website and an app for the business to consumer market. This website and app need to be clear, concise, and extremely user friendly. When somebody's looking for a price on a particular product, the 360PI app is what is the app they're going to take out of their pocket. Of course, when they do go onto this app, they will need to create a customer profile. This will be able, this will allow you to take demographics and of what products certain people are looking at and allows you to have certain data for, in that aspect. And of course, what makes a website and an app really com competitive is the consumer features. So we'd like to implement this notification feature. When you notice somebody is looking up a product on your app or your website a considerable, a, a considerable amount of time, you will then notify them when that price declines. Looking at uh, the 360 pick, this will be your pick, what you find is the best product in that particular product segment. 
So, of course, you're probably wondering, where is the revenue going to come from? Other than the fact that they will be using your website and your app, you'll be getting revenue from certain businesses. When, they, when the customers do create that consumer profile, you will have data that the business will, will want. So if a business elects to, you can provide them with that data at a fee. Secondly, the 360 pick. If a business wants their product to be the product that is featured through the 360 pick, they do have to pay a price for this. So this does lead us to our key takeaway our, and a key goal for this phase, that to adapt your business operations and give yourself a distinct competitive advantage. So finally, we're going to look at our expand phase. Now, you've already identified that international, uh, the opportunity within international expansion. And from us, you've asked us to answer specific questions. So this is what we're going to start to do at this point. So first, looking at when to uh, begin your international expansion, as well as how fast. And we believe that the best way to do this is immediately and aggressively. The opportunity is happening now, and no one has taken full advantage of it yet. So if you are the first goers in this market, then it will be the best way for you to proceed, and you will be able to uh, gain the most market share. You will be able to take the most advantage of this opportunity. So finally, uh, uh, then moving on to the where and why. Now, of course, we would like to see uh, some market research being done in this area. Uh, we don't believe we have all the necessary information to do, provide you with the most beneficial solution. And uh, we want you to be absolutely comfortable with whatever area you decide to expand to. However, based on the information that we were provided with, we have decided that the best option at this point would be to go into China, which we will explain now. So we have identified uh, different criteria that we have been provided with, as well as uh, a, a comparative, uh, put it on a comparative basis to other countries and other areas that you have considered expanding to. So of course, for population, GDP, um, online buying intention, and for the e-commerce, actual physical e-commerce sales, the highest in all of these have been in China. This presents a wonderful opportunity, a huge market for you to go into. And then uh, another huge factor will, of course, be the level of competition, which is extremely low in your industry in China. This is wonderful. This in combination with the high potential of the, of the, the, the size of the market itself, it makes it a great location for you, for you to expand. Uh, now, we do identify that there are several weaknesses along with this recommendation, such as uh, cultural and uh, language barriers, as well as uh, restrictions on certain government uh, internet access. However, we will be addressing these as we move forward with our implementation plan. So this leads us to our key goal with this phase, which is to take advantage of opportunities while achieving your global expansion. So taking a look at some human resource considerations, obviously you need to ensure you have adequate capabilities for this grocery segment and in that retail industry. You need to make sure you do have enough employees to uh, go through with this endeavor. Of course, you also do need to train your employees, with this means you need to see uh, app and website. You do also need to establish personnel in China for when you do make that leap across the pond and begin international expansion. And finally, you do need to train your employees with the, the new Chinese technology that will be implemented for that B2B market. So next, we're going to take a look at some marketing considerations. So first off, the release of the business to consumer app. Now, we understand that you're primarily operating within North America, so we'd like to see the initial launch of this app happen within North America. Taking into consideration your vast knowledge and experience working within this industry, marketing to those consumers, we'd like to see you utilize all of those capabilities and those understandings to market this app to the appropriate consumers in the appropriate ways. And then understanding that this is a uh, going to be available on the internet, it will have global reach eventually, which you can utilize as you move internationally. And then looking at the uh, targeting retailers that are similar to those you already work with in China when you do expand, um, considering or when you do expand to China, um, if that's something that you're going to be considering. We understand that you have extensive knowledge and uh, capabilities and experience working with those large on-channel uh, retailers such as Best Buy Canada um, and we'd like to see you use those capabilities and those understandings and that knowledge and apply those as you move to ensure that your transition into a new market is as smooth as possible. So next taking a look at some logistics and operations considerations. Uh, first and foremost we would like to see you perform extensive research and development 
And this is going to be in a number of areas. Uh, the grocery retail segment, of course, this is going to have to be developed. We want to ensure that the implementation within this sector, uh, being ready for that boom that we're anticipating, um, is firm and established uh, moving forward. Next, as Jeremy had discussed, the development of this app. Of course, we'll need to determine uh, how to develop this app, uh, the, co the general concept of what the app is going to look like, as well as finally actually developing this app. Uh, thirdly, and most importantly, we want to see you perform very extensive market research into this new international expansion endeavor. We've suggested China. We want to make sure that you're confident and comfortable with pursuing this particular recommendation before you do so. We want to make sure you have your due diligence done before actually making the commitment there, uh, ensuring that this is going to be an effective and smooth transition. Uh, next, we'd like to see you develop contacts in the grocery trade sector. Uh, we understand that some of the retailers that you work with now have that component as well, so this could potentially be a smooth transition. However, we'd like to see you develop the contacts there as well in anticipation of this being a, a growing sector. Thirdly, we'd like to see you develop those retail contacts, as Shanice had mentioned, in China and establish the personnel there uh, in anticipation of establishing yourselves in the Chinese market. Fourthly, we'd like to see you harvest the information from the consumer segment. So at the app, as Jeremy has discussed, um, will serve great potential in terms of achieving newfound information that could then be provided at a benefit to your business consumers. We really want to see you harvest that effectively, and we firmly believe that you have the capabilities to do so. Finally, we want to see you establish a base in China. As Jeremy had mentioned, we believe that it's most effective to establish personnel in China, uh, and we firmly believe that they should have a place to work there and ensure that the cultural differences with those personnel are met and having a very effective and efficient implementation process there. We believe that establishing a base for your Chinese personnel would be the best way to do so. So finally, we're going to take a look at some financial considerations. Now, first and foremost, we'd like to say that we did not feel comfortable assigning specific numbers to these as we were provided with limited information. We did not believe that assigning numbers at random would provide any value to you as a company. So, but we still believe that we need to identify exactly which cost considerations you will need to take into account moving forward with this recommendation. So first, looking at the research and development. Uh, the research and development that Luke has just described with our logistics and, and uh, uh, logistics and operations considerations. This will, of course, be for the app uh, and uh, for any uh, out, uh, and moving on next to the technological adjustments for algorithms. And this will uh, continue to be uh, technological changes that you need to make uh, for the uh, grocery retailer section as well as moving uh, the section of moving to China. So. Uh, changing the language, uh, currency e exchange rates, and uh, such things that need to be taken into consideration whenever you're moving, uh, putting your software into the Chinese market. Uh, finally, uh, sorry, next looking at some travel costs. Of course, you will need to do, this will be part of your uh, market research in China and in other locations, uh, making sure this is the best location for you and uh, being there to implement everything to hire the most qualified personnel to establish that base there. Uh, and then, of course, lease payments that will be taken into consideration for the base that you establish in China. And finally, the employee training. We want them to embody everything that your company has to offer. And so this is going to re uh, require some extensive employee training that uh, the cost consideration you need to take into account. Now, of course, we do like to say that we realize that these costs will be quite significant. However, we also recognize that you are a company with $100 billion, over $100 billion in revenues, and we think that these costs will absolutely be able to be covered uh, with your current operations. So taking a look at the timeline, in zero and 12 months, we'd like to see you really develop that research and development stage, as it is very crucial for both the app and the grocery segments. In 12 and 18 months, we'd like to see you both contact the grocery stores about this business-to-business -business app in the retail segment and launch that business-to-consumer app in North America. And then finally, in 18 to 24 months, we'd like to also see you launch that uh, grocery retail segment app, business-to-business um, -business product. And then in zero to 12 months, we'd like to see you do that market research in China. Uh, we'd like to also see you hire personnel in China and find a location in 12 to 18 months. And then finally, in 18 months, we'd like to see you start operations in China. So we've identified a number of risks along with mitigations that we'd be happy to go over with you during the question and answer period. So in conclusion, to wrap things up, restating the three main issues we identified at the very beginning of the presentation, intensifying industry competition, international expansion, as well as changing market trends. We are adapt we have we believe that by adapting the, the adaptive growth strategy, you'll be able to solve and mitigate every single one of the issues. We are Paramount Solutions, and we thank you for your time.
Thank you very much, team. The presentation was 19 minutes and 41 seconds. We now have 10 minutes for the question and answer period. Hi, my question is regarding the grocery segment. And uh, I believe 360Pi software, uh, PIE software is most valuable when you have an abundance of vendors selling the same product at different prices. Given that the grocery business is very local, and the pool of grocery companies offering in online fashion their products is really low. Uh, why do you feel 360 PI would be con considered a value added tool by a small group of grocery companies in a geographic region? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we believe that in the near future, the grocery retail segment is going to grow tremendously. Um, right now, obviously, having that one quarter of retail sales in North America, Grocery retail is a commodity uh, in our society, and we believe that's going to stay. Uh, we really believe that this sector is going to develop in terms of e-commerce. Noting that Amazon, one of the biggest players in the world, has moved towards this movement as well. Uh, we believe that this, is, this trend is going to be follow, followed suit uh, by other major players in the industry as well. Uh, it's just a matter of time. Our strategic motivation here is really encompassing that innovative and proactive values that you have encompassed thus far, and positioning yourself there, having that first mover's advantage before this boom, uh, we believe is the most strategic and effective way to position yourselves. Thanks, presentation, thanks. Um, I have two how questions, and you did get into the how in the implementation section, but I'll, I'll ask them uh, and we can get uh, quick comments from you. Um, first one is, we're a small company, uh, you know, a lot of uh, priorities here that we're looking like you're recommending to do. Uh, how will we implement that with the, with the small team we have I get to, to get these initiatives going. That's one how question, and the other one's more specific to the China entry. Uh, I'd like you to expand a little bit about how specifically we'll enter a market that is so foreign to us. Um, that's largely going to come into a play with establishing the personnel in that specific region. Uh, we understand you have a very capable and competent uh, team to work with now, and we believe that the extent of these competencies can extend very greatly. Um, however, of course, with huge endeavors expanding into the Chinese market, uh, we believe that you absolutely need to establish personnel there to assist in the implementation in there. Um, obviously, your comfort zone lies in the North American market. We'd like to see you establish relationships where their comfort zone is in the There's uh, synergies there. then you must be somewhat taken aback when Niraj is saying small company. Yes. Yeah, um, and that's why I just had to flip back to the case and we said something about 30 employees and we're based with $100 billion in sales. That's, yes. Which... Uh, you know, what you recommend to us. Um, 
Uh, on, just to add on to that, we did also recognize the various investors that you had. And with this, we saw that you potentially did have some free, uh, a significant amount of free cash flows available to you to proceed with these recommendations as well. Okay. I, I guess I have a sort of related question to what Niraj was asking, which is, you know, on the one hand, I heard at some point, need to move as aggressively as possibly, you know, be very quick about it. And then I saw an implementation timeline that wasn't actually relatively quick on any one of the three, but as you pointed out, you know, you gave us 12 months or something to, to launch something and maybe 18, 24 before you know, fully getting to implementation. So I'm just trying to reconcile, you know, those two points about moving aggressively, but then doing it across three different paths that all take at least 12 months to come to fruition. Absolutely. When I say aggressively uh, with that recommendation, I did mean in terms of uh, beginning to do the research and beginning to do it all right now and as quickly as you possibly can. However, aggressively is relative in this particular situation and we see that in terms of the, the 12 months that we recommended to be able to truly implement this. So you think the preferred approach is to start to do the research and pursue all three of these in a 12-month time frame as opposed to, for example, just diving into one and pursuing that more aggressively. I think if you go back to our timeline just to clarify that. And just so you know, the research and development is really going to happen in the zero to 12 months, and you're going to be launching that D2C app and website at the 12-month mark. And there's going to be a staggered another six months before you do start with the uh, growth and speed of the segment. And then finally, it's staggered again when you do start our operations in China at the 18th month. 18th month. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so sort of taking a, a different um, <clears throat> question. So many of our existing clients are already international today, or they have international aspirations. But the clear majority are nowhere in China. So how should this play into our national development plans? Um, that's where our, in our phase of establishing contacts in those retail segments in China is going to take place. Um, in those research and development phases, traveling to China and establishing contacts there, uh, we believe, as we have done in the past, in establishing contacts in those retail segments should again then be performed in China and establishing a similar customer base that you have now in North America and really looking to develop that over the next few years in China as well. The same kind of a I understand that. The challenge I have is how do I assist the international plans of my existing clients that may or may not include China at the same time? I think this is also part of the reason why we really uh, tried to suggest that you do market research before deciding on an opportunity. Uh, potentially, based on that information, China isn't your best option. However, with the information we were provided with, we felt that was the way to go. Okay, so you have some good ideas when it comes to the B2C. I really like those, but this is all going to be new to consumers, right? These apps that they can use kind of in while they're showrooming and things like that. So how do you intend on targeting them and getting them on board? Um, I think that uh, based on your extensive knowledge within the market that we suggested, within North America, that we suggested you initially uh, launch this, uh, we I think the general consensus was that we believe that based on the amount of time and uh, the extensive experience you have with both um, starting with the end consumers and then moving to the business, uh, the more retail end of things, you have a wide range of understanding of how to work with and um, target and understand what both ends of the spectrum are looking for in terms of um, marketing and uh, price sensitivity and those types of things. So. Um, and, and then moving on to the um, research and development phase of that as well, that would also include some market research to understand how to effectively target both of those uh, segments. Thank you. I assume that this company has lots of money as it is presumption. Uh, how come you haven't uh, suggested to us that you just buy another company, acquire some other company, and that's how we grow the business. Because the assumption is that the company is loaded with cash. If acquisition is something that to be presented, obviously that would be one of your fastest opportunities for growth. However, we were presented with a number of alternatives 
uh, to pursue in terms of what you felt comfortable with in terms of your capabilities and know-how. Uh, we didn't believe that there were any appealing acquisitions at stake. However, that could be something down the road if we look to expand and develop more aggressively in the future. Uh, we believe, however, um, building on those internal strengths that you have now, developing yourself domestically and moving forward. Thank you. Thank you.